Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 3rd of August 2019 and we're providing our gold and silver weekly update for the week ending the 2nd of August. We shall also be commenting on the Fed's reduction in interest rates and what this may mean for gold and silver prices. Gold rose $22 last week from $1,418 to $1,440, having hit a high of $1,446 and a low of $1,401. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,185, that's up £40. And in euros, it closed at €1,296, that's up €22. Euros. Silver fell 19 cents from $16.39 to $16.20, having hit a high of $16.60 and a low of $15.94. In sterling terms, it closed at £13.33, that's up 10 pence. And in euros, it closed at 14.57 euros, that's down 0 0.15 euros. The gold to silver ratio rose from 86.5 to 1, to 88.8 to 1. The Dow Jones closed on Friday at 26,485, down 98 points on the day and down 707 points on the week. And the Nasdaq closed at 8,004, down 107 points on the day and down 326 points on the week. And the S&P 500 closed at 2,932, down 21 points on the day and down 93 points on the week. So all markets down. Brent crude fell $1.57 from $63.46 to $61.89. And US light crude fell 54 cents from $56.20 to $55.66. The dollar index stands at 98.07. That's up 0 0.06 on the week. Well, what an interesting week last week proved to be. We had gold initially rising, then essentially collapsing after the Fed announcement on interest rates, and then recovering and reaching new recent highs almost within hours of the original fall. So what actually happened? Well, much of it is explained in the videos we produced last week, which includes titles such as Fed Cuts Rates First Time Since 2008 Assessment, Why Gold and Silver Prices Fell Following Rate Cut, and Trump Tweets More China Tariffs Analysis. If you haven't already listened to them, we've provided links in the description box below. We seriously suggest you do so, as a number of experts have come out since their publication, offering similar analysis and broadly agreeing with our statements. But in short, whilst the Fed reduced rates by a quarter percent, this was already baked in, and markets were disappointed in that the Fed adopted a more hawkish stance about future cuts than expected thereby strengthening the dollar, adversely affecting stock markets slightly initially and causing gold and silver prices to fall. However, within hours, President Trump then tweets that he is imposing an additional 10% tariffs on virtually all Chinese imports, some $300 billion worth with effect from the 1st of September, thereby reversing the dollar strength, raising gold and silver prices and adversely affecting stocks further. So a most interesting roller coaster ride, supporting our view, often repeated, that politics has as much to do with precious metal price action as most of the other criteria which affects them, and the reason we covered these issues within this channel. From a technical point of view, and to be fair, also from a psychological point of view, gold is hovering and may eventually surpass that all-important 1450 level and will attempt to gravitate towards $1,500. If that level is then broken, then we could indeed see go move even higher. 
However, we suspect that there is likely to be some consolidation first. On the downside, $1,400 offer considerable support, though it was nearly breached last week. And if traders push it down to that level, it could fall by some $50 to 1350 However, President Trump is so desperate to get the Fed to cut interest rates further, as he wants stock markets to rise to a zenith come the next election, he may attempt a number of tariff initiatives and controversies in order to get the Fed to reduce rates as a counterbalance to the disruption. This will certainly prove positive for gold, but is, in our opinion, a very risky strategy, should it go wrong. The result of his tariff announcement of 10% increase and his comments to reporters afterwards that he could very, very easily increase this to 25% in short order resulted in the yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note plummeting to its lowest level since 2016 in response to the news. We need not remind you that low yields tend to make gold a more attractive asset. Friday was also an important day for economic data, including the all-important non-farm payroll report, which showed 164,000 new jobs were created in July, against an expectation of 163,000, with the unemployment rate just blipping up slightly to 3.7%, just 0.1% higher than expectations, but equivalent to June's figures. Average hourly earnings were also the same as June's at 0.3%, but higher than expectations of 0.2%, and both consumer sentiment and factory orders were within a fraction of expectations. Any of these figures had the potential to affect markets one way or the other, but as they were so close to expectations, to some degree their impact was quite benign. Silver did not fare so well as gold, with the gold to silver ratio rising by over two points, resting just slightly short of 89 to 1. Now, of course, we could be wrong, but while the trade disputes are in effect and the global recession continues, we have difficulty in seeing the gold to silver ratio falling much below 85 to 1, and possibly even rising back into the 90s. Whilst the pumpers will have you believe the correction is imminent and guaranteed, we would argue not so while these disputes and economic uncertainty continues. You see, if industrial demand for silver was not such an important percentage of its overall demand, perhaps our position would be different. But as it is, while the world is in recession, Physical demand for industrial purposes is likely to fall, and one can then only hope that its demand as a monetary metal becomes more prominent and makes up that shortfall, which is by no means as certain as the pumpers would have you believe. One day the ratio will correct somewhat, but we're just not convinced it's going to be that soon. What was notable last week was that silver fell below that important $16 support level, though it did quickly recover. Though one has to ask how much lower than $16 it would currently be resting at had it not been for Trump's tweet re-China tariffs. So we would not be at all surprised to see silver vacillate over the coming weeks between $1550 and $17, with the latter really being at the higher end of our expectation over the summer months, although we have forecast that we may see 1750 at some stage before the year is out. But as to whether it will hold at that level is anyone's guess at this stage. So let's take a brief look at what economic data will be announced this coming week. Well, on Monday we have the Market Services PMI and the ISM non-manufacturing data for July. Wednesday, the consumer credit figures for June. Thursday Wholesale Inventories and Friday Producer Price Index. So nothing really significant to affect gold and silver prices, though perhaps Monday and Friday will be the more interesting days. We would now like to add a little here about gold and silver prices in sterling, and which to some extent applies to other countries in a similar position outside of the United States. 
This past two weeks, we have produced a number of YouTube videos highlighting the fact that we expected gold prices to rise to all-time highs in sterling terms, and this it has done. Now, we appreciate that those living in the United States will not be anywhere near as interested in this as our Anglo cousins are, but it is important that you are at least aware of this. As far as the United Kingdom is concerned, the Brexit factor has a huge impact, and as far as Europe is concerned, it also has quite a significant impact. We have seen sterling's value fall quite considerably these past two years, and particularly more recently, as the prospect of a hard Brexit becomes increasingly likely. The result of this currency weakening, and particularly weakening against the US dollar, is that gold and silver prices rise. Not necessarily because Brits are rushing to the bullion dealers buying it, but because its global price is set in dollars, and so it's the interrelationship between one currency and the US dollar which is important. Now, of course, if the dollar price of gold and silver also rises at the same time, then the bullish price action is accentuated. So the two videos we draw to your attention are one entitled Gold Soon to Reach Its All-Time High in Sterling, that is, and the second Sterling Sinks Lower Positive for Gold and Silver, and we again provide links in the description below. These are particularly important, of course, to those who purchase gold and silver in sterling terms, as at some stage this sterling weakness will eventually reverse. Not for a few months, in our opinion, but traders and some gold holders may wish to cash in at some point and so it's important to keep abreast of these developments. It's also important for others too, as these and other videos we produce provide reasonably accurate diagnosis and predictive context, and one day your currency may be facing similar circumstances. We often smile when perhaps we may only receive a thousand or two thousand views on our videos, while others who just repeat talking heads with gold and silver going to the moon and bringing in their followers with clickbait receiving up to even a hundred thousand views. We smile because often people listen to just what they want to hear and not what actually is happening. This is a hugely increasing problem with social media and media in general as it means that fake news can be sincerely believed by those who neither have the time or in some cases the skills to differentiate. You see this most clearly with the naive followers of some politicians. Fake news and bubble thinking is doing great damage to our society as a whole. We also smile because we're now receiving journalist requests from serious newspapers and media blogs asking our opinion on future developments. So as you listen to our videos for free, or as a paying member in the Inner Sanctum, please at least be mindful of the fact that some journalists and bloggers are paying literally scores and often hundreds of dollars or pounds for broadly the same information, except that they put it out under their own name or banner. We mention this only so that sometimes when one gets information for free or for a small fee, they often take it for granted or even occasionally dismiss it. We are not some kid in a bedroom reading Alex Jones or some pumper just regurgitating the same old crap, sorry for the language, in order to attract viewers via clickbait headlines and techniques. This is a channel that takes you seriously and attempts to put in relatively simple terms what is actually occurring in a complex financial and political world. And for those one to two thousand who listen to us regularly, we both thank and congratulate you for at least having the discernment to do so. So next week we suspect some consolidation, but again simply warn the issues to look out for are China, Iran, Trump picking new battles on trade, North Korea, and for the Brits, Brexit though most parliaments are now in recess and so the media will often be scratching around and in some cases creating news. There is also the possibility, 
and much depends on economic earnings from companies, that stocks may take a slight hit or a correction downwards, as markets were not too happy about the Fed's hawkish stance on interest rates for the future, and even less happy about Trump's tweets on tariffs. And as any deal with China is unlikely before September, we may indeed see some drift downwards in equities until more certainty occurs. This could indeed be positive for gold and to a lesser extent silver, and perhaps may correct any consolidation of precious metal prices to the upside. Finally, to all Inner Sanctum members, we are sending an email later today with a link to our Discord channel, plus two videos you can watch highlighting how it works. Please do join Discord, as we shall shortly be offering a number of monetary incentives to members who regularly participate in it. Also, our monthly silver webinar will be held next Saturday as opposed to today, as we have to align our registration and website process with the new system YouTube uses for webinars, as Google Hangouts has now been discontinued. All that remains is for us to wish each of you a great weekend and a most prosperous week ahead. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. <laughs>